Before we dive in, just a reminder that you can find all the patterns and artwork from my projects on my Etsy store. There'll be a link right here. You can also find all the patterns and artwork from my latest builds month to month on my Patreon, so go have a look at those. And if you look down below the video, you can see links to a bunch of shirts that I've designed. Maybe you want to check that out. That'd be awesome. Let's get started. So this is the pattern I've put together for my Etsy shop. I'll also have it on my Patreon for a bit, as I was saying. We're just going to cut it out really quick. One of the things I really like about this pattern is the upper arm piece that can be modified. So you can easily make it your own. Make an adjustment to this piece right here I just cut out. And you can uh, make it a whole different looking set of ambraces. There are slight differences with the wrist and forearm strap. Just the whole spacing is a little different. This pattern is sized to my arm pretty closely, so you might have to make some adjustments. If you have a smaller arm, a bigger arm might be okay. You should be able to just scale the pattern appropriately and go from there. I of course love doing some knot work, so we're going to put knot work on these bracers as well. I'm going to do something in the middle and at the wrist. I think it turned out pretty cool when I'm all done here. If you want to try doing knot work on your own, it's really not as difficult as you might think it is. It's just a squiggly line. You just got to make sure that you are gradual with your curves and you're patient. That's all it is. A lot of patience. Really you can apply that tip to anything, so yeah, just be patient with your projects. After I get this wrist piece to a place where I'm happy with it, I'm going to mirror the mid-arm piece. Now I'm going to use a light table for this. You could put it into Photoshop, print it off, reverse it, whatever you want to do, but just remember that more often than not when you reverse it you're going to have to change all of your under overs to the opposite. So you'll see when I do my mirroring it's all about switching all my under overs to make sure that everything I hope is properly under over all the way around my whole piece of knot work. So we will just get this done really quick and then we'll do our inking. I use these uh, Faber-Castell pens that I really like. Uh, there's a link on my Amazon shop if you're interested. Well there's lots of links on my Amazon shop if you're interested tools and equipment. If you are doing knot work and haven't tried inking, um, I know for somebody who's uh, more of a traditional artist it's probably something that makes sense to them but I don't do a lot of art so when I first started using these pens on my artwork it really made them pop and I was quite happy with the result so you can really jazz up your art pretty quickly if you just hit it with some ink. Nice so I'm just gonna do my little lines and a couple little additional bits to make it look kinda of funky and then this new technique I've learned is pretty complex but you just gotta use some slight hand motion and then you can just bam copy it to your tracing film instantly it's quite useful now we're just gonna cut everything out we need a couple of arm braces we need four straps we need two upper arm pieces um, more often than not I'm using 1 8 inch holes or slightly smaller and for a piece this thick which is uh, about 8 ounce belt leather I'm using a number two beveler. I don't usually go up to number three. I may go down to number one, but usually it's number two. Again, feel free to experiment with this design. You could do three spikes close together. You could do all sorts of stuff. You could carve this piece and attach it. It can really make your project stand out from everybody else's, especially if you're grabbing the pattern off me and you want to be different. Now we're just stripping the straps. This is about a four ounce, I think it was a little light, five might be better, um, but again if you're going to go up higher you're going to have to skive the uh, buckle end of your strap so it folds nicely. Make sure you're lining up your holes perfectly because nothing says shoddy work like holes that are off centered so keep an eye on that. When I beveled these sides, it was a number one actually, a very fine deluxe beveler. When you wet your leather for carving, you gotta let it dry for a while, make sure the core is moist, the top is cool but not wet. Transfer your pattern with a stylus. This is my favorite stylus, I think I have three of them around the shop. It's uh, linked on my Amazon store if you wanna go snag it. And then we're just gonna blow through all this swivel knife work. I use a ceramic blade and some people seem to freak out when they see me sharpening it in air quotes. 
Just like you would polish a gemstone, all it's doing is making sure that my blade is super clean and will glide really easily. So if you have a ceramic blade and you don't think you need to sharpen it, well just don't think of it as sharpening it, think of it as cleaning it. So just buff it up with your rouge and it'll glide really nice. In fact, I didn't use my ceramic blade forever because it was terrible. And then I sharpened it or cleaned it and it was great. Alright folks, who here wants to watch 45 minutes worth of beveling? No? Okay, so I'm going to skip through the beveling pretty good here. Just make sure that your hammer strokes are consistent. You can go back over the area with your beveler, just smoothing it out without hammering to get rid of some of those tool marks. And then after you've done all this beveling, well, there's only one thing to do. Snap trick, that's the easiest way to carve your other piece. I used a lighter brown than usual on this project, and it didn't blend as well. What I should have done is applied a light coat of water first, that would have helped blend the dyes a little more. But in the end, it turns out looking pretty good when it's all done anyways. I still would have liked it to be dyed perfectly though. And, snap again. When I'm burnishing, I tend to use some beeswax. You can use water, you can use saddle soap, whatever your preference is. I don't expect everybody to have a motorized burnisher. There's a link to one on my Amazon storefront, but there's lots of small, very inexpensive hand tools like this one that you can use to burnish your edges. So even though I've used my burnisher, I'm uh, my motorized burnisher, I'm using this hand tool just to clean it up a little bit. And then I buff it to remove any excess wax. So now I'm applying some acrylic resiline with my spray gun. If applying resists and finishes to your projects has ever driven you crazy getting it even, a spray gun and compressor is definitely the way to go. This is some gel antique. I usually use the dark brown gel antique. Recently I've put too much stain on. That time it was too little so I added a little more. If you're going to just spray it on your project like that, be quick with rubbing it in. Now here I'm using a little bin of black dye that I have lying around because I'm feeling lazy. If you have a large project that you gotta get done with multiple pieces over uh, the whole day and you gotta dye a bunch of stuff, it might be a good idea to just to dip dye them. Or, you know, buy black leather, which is totally a possibility. I even have black leather. I could have just done this stuff out of black leather. Now, here I'm burnishing without putting any wax on the edge. Because these pieces are still slightly wet, they slick up just fine. Now, the beeswax would offer a little bit of protection to the edge, but this is fine if you are in a pinch. And once I've burnished all the pieces, I buff to make sure that there's no marks on those edges. And then I'm gonna fold those pieces in half and wrap a thin piece of black leather around them to make a keeper. You want the keeper length just slightly bigger than the circumference of wrapping around that folded strap. Now this is my little stapler I use for keepers a lot of the time. You guys have seen me stitch keepers together I do a ton of stapled keepers, it's really quick. There'll be a link to the stapler in my Amazon store because, well, everything else is linked in my Amazon store. So we're doing four of these keepers. Once they're stapled, I want to tap them just a little bit to make sure they're fully set. And now I'm going to use the same resist I used as a finish for all my black pieces, that acrylic resiline or neutral resiline. And we're gonna rivet everything together. Lots of little tiny antique brass rivets. Just fly through it really quick. I'm using the smallest antique brass caps I had kicking around here, just so they didn't get too far onto that edge and look out of place. Sometimes I use a rivet setter, sometimes I don't. You can just hammer them flat if you don't have a setter. You get a little dome if you use the setter. Slide the keeper in, same size rivets. Put these straps together and then mount them to your van braces. Now, one thing here is the whole spacing on the straps is made so that there's gonna be a buckle. So that means that, uh, see there, there's a little loop. So when it bends, it'll form around it nicely instead of being awkwardly tight and possibly popping rivets out. I think that the space I have there is just a little too much. So I've changed it for the pattern and lessened it just a tiny bit, but even that would have been fine. Just always consider that when you're uh, bending stuff around something. Now I'm just testing it. Get the fit right. Needs to be a little tighter. Mark my holes. I usually throw three holes in something. Form it so it rolls around my arm a bit better. Do it up. And we've got an almost complete van brace. Or bracer, some people would say. 
if you pause it here, you can see that the buckles don't line up perfectly, so that annoyed me and I went and changed the pattern, so now they do. Now you just trim your ends and touch up the edges with some black dye. This is just me showing why I have the wrist cut like it is. It's so you can bend your hand forward without it interfering with the rest of the cuff. Well, that's about it, everybody. I think those van braces turned out pretty cool. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button to make sure you don't miss any of my videos. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.